Okie dokie. Today's Wednesday. Wednesday means Webinar Wednesday, which is uh, my favorite day of the week is Webinar Wednesday. Um, and so we're going to get going. Good morning, everybody, or good afternoon, depending on where you're from. Welcome to Airtime, brought to you by Elevate Aviation. So glad that you could join us today, whether it's here on Zoom or if you're watching on Facebook Live. I want to remind you all that it is okay to ask questions. We have a pro speaker on today. For saying that later, but we'll see. <laughs> so please feel free to ask any questions. Um, as always, Airtime is brought to you by Elevate Aviation. My name is Kendra Kincaid, and I am the founder of Elevate Aviation, uh, and soon to be back to work as an air traffic controller. Um, this week, actually, uh, I've been so fortunate over the last two years uh, to be able to work for Nav Canada full time. Um, trying to get more women interested in aviation, traveling the country, sometimes traveling the world. And I've been very lucky, but of course, because of COVID-19, there are a lot of changes happening in the aviation industry, including with Nav Canada. So uh, I'm going back to the radar screen. Uh, that is not gonna stop Elevate Aviation from doing the work that we do. Uh, my role is just going to look a little bit different, and that includes these Wednesday webinars. Of course, we all know that uh, air traffic control is shift work, and so having a regular series of Wednesday webinars isn't going to happen. So we're actually going to move over to a podcast space. So uh, a little different for us, but I think really exciting. And um, so we're going to continue to have guests, but it will be on the podcast. So I encourage you all to, if you're not already on our email, please sign up for our email or follow us on social media to, to keep the details about um, when we're going to launch that podcast. Hopefully it will be pretty soon and continue to um, listen to our stories that we have of, of uh, the stories from the people who are inside the aviation industry. Uh, we really uh, appreciate that you watch and that we have the opportunity to share the stories like the one that you're going to hear today. Um, before I introduce Rosella, I just want to say um, we are having a, our first masterclass. It is on leadership and it's only open to 10 people. It's going to be in November. So if you're interested at all about hearing more about our leadership masterclass uh, featuring people like CEO of WestJet, Ed Sims, and the VP of Labor Relations for NAV Canada, Elizabeth Cameron, uh, to talk about negotiating your worth, um, email info to Elevate Aviation to get more details. Okay, so now the queen of aviation, I'm going to call her, uh, Rosella Bjornsson. She is a retired Canadian airline pilot who was the first female pilot for commercial airline in North America. She was also the first member of the Canadian Airline Pilots Association International. Uh, Rosella's groundbreaking flight as a commercial pilot was in 1973, and that was five years before Air Canada hired their first Judy Cameron. So it was a five year gap in there before Judy Cameron was hired. So we're gonna to talk to Rosella about that, about being the first and what that was like. To name just a few of Rosella's awards, she was inducted into the Canadian Aviation Hall of Fame. She was inducted into the Women in Aviation, now Women in Aviation International Hall of Fame. She was honored with a commemorative postage stamp and she was appointed to the Alberta Order of Excellence. And that's just to name a few. So please, uh, Rosella, hi. Hello, good morning, Kendra. How good. are you? Very good. Uh, even better now that uh, I get to have an hour with you. This is fantastic. Well, it's uh, certainly a pleasure. Yeah, I, I, we got the technology working. We're good to go. Okay, so I'm gonna jump right into it, Rosella. So like, first of all, you're amazing. Um, no, I, like, I'm retired. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're just amazing. And even though you're retired, I know that you still um, have a, a passion to get you know women into aviation. I've, I've, you know, I've been with you at events and uh, you're just so inspiring. Your, your whole life has been inspiring. and let's start with way back when you first had an interest in aviation. Can you tell us about that? Did that come from your dad? It was from my dad. My dad, uh, he wanted to join the, the military, uh, the Air Force when he was, um, 
Well, during World War II, but because they needed farmers at home, he was refused um, when he went to the recruiting office. So after World War II, in 1945, all these pilots came back from the war, and of course they still wanted to fly. So this one fellow um, bought a tiger moth and went around to, to all these uh, small towns and uh, offered flying lessons. And my father took uh, flying lessons uh, in 1945 in uh, a little town of Champion, Alberta. So he started flying and he bought a, an Aronka Champ. And I was born in 1947, so I uh, rode along with him. And uh, I think that's where my love of flying started was when I was a child riding along with my dad. Wow. And so it was ingrained early. Like oh, you oh, yeah. knew aviation from the time you were a baby then. It's wow. So then what did what did the journey look like? Like did you always know that you would be a pilot? I mean there were no there were no women that looked like you. There were no people that looked like you as pilots. So what made what made you think you could be a pilot? <laughs> because I well my father had three daughters on the farm and uh, he needed help. So I learned to drive the tractors, combines, uh, all the machinery and help him. And so I figured, well, and he had an airplane sitting in the hangar. Well, I figured if I could drive a, a tractor, then I should be able to drive an aircraft. So uh, I was uh, sort of convinced him that I should learn to fly too. And then did, did he did he teach you well i rode along with him and he kept telling me you know i can't teach you because i'm not an instructor but i picked up on a few things and uh i think when i was about uh, 12 or 13 14 years old he decided that someone if anything happened to him that someone should be able to land the aircraft and because my mother wouldn't touch the controls uh, he decided to teach me to land the aircraft. And so we did it, went out and did circuits in a, a field. And oh, I did some reasonable landings. And so he thought it was, uh, I, I was quite a natural. So like for your dad to teach you how to fly at that time, was that quite unusual? Like, w well, would you? I, it was, um, I'm just thankful that he did it because on my 17th birthday, my mother and father drove me to Lethbridge, to the Lethbridge Flying Club. And for my 17th birthday, I had my first lesson, official lesson. And uh, it was quite exciting. I quite enjoyed it. And uh, the, uh, of course, it was a, <laughs> a little Piper Colt. They're quite a cute little aircraft. Um, got in and we taxied out and we took off and we flew around and came back and landed. And as we're taxiing in, the instructor said, you've flown before, haven't you? <laughs> wow. So, so the I was very determined at that point. By the time I was 17, I knew I wanted to be a pilot. And a counselor, you know, a counselor at school, well, career counseling what do you want to be when you grow up I always said pilot I want to be a pilot and they'd say well I don't think there are any women pilots are there and I said there were a lot of private women pilots and there was an instructor that I'd met um, her name was Gina Jordan and she worked out of Calgary uh, Gina took me under her wing for my commercial license and my uh, instructor's rating. So it was great to work with her. Wow. So, so that was seven, you were 17. Then how old were you when you got your first commercial job? Okay. I, I went to university well, after uh, high school for four years at the University of Calgary. And uh, while in the summers, I worked on my commercial license and my instructor's rating. So it was, um, uh, Oh, I, I started looking for a, 
an instructing job uh, 19 when I graduated or when I graduated from university uh, that summer and the Winnipeg Flying Club offered me a job so I loaded up my little Chevy 2 and drove to Winnipeg and started in I think it was 1970 at the Winnipeg Flying Club and I uh, instructed there for three years before I was hired by Transair and Transair was based in Winnipeg and Transair had the two 737s and two F-28s and uh, they were hiring so I was qualified and I got hired so that wow. was a, that was in April of 1973. 1973 mm -hmm. and so was there did you encounter any difficulties at all or anything? Well I was very fortunate um, I think because I uh, I tried to be very professional and I the chief the chief pilot of Transair um, he said to me one time he says I don't care whether you're male or female as long as you can do the job you'll be okay so I um, figured well if I better be careful and just do it right follow the instructions and uh, do everything right and uh, he was very supportive uh, mainly because he'd had a, a woman instructor himself so he uh, had no hesitation uh, with having a woman and I think because the chief pilot treated me as um, with respect uh, all the other pilots uh, treated me with respect as well Wow, oh, that's so good like did you when you became the first female pilot to captain a aircraft a, a jet well, aircraft and I was hired as a first officer and it took because of the industry and there was not much movement I was a first officer for 17 years and that just means a co-pilot but I'm doing everything that the captain is doing mm -hmm. Now, I did not get my captaincy until 1990. And by then, uh, there were quite a few women pilots that had been hired in the United States that ha were upgraded to captain. So they made captain before I did. But I was the first woman captain in Canada with the major airlines. Did, I suppose it didn't occur to you when you were younger saying, uh, I want to be a pilot that you were going to one day be an award winner. <laughs> I'm like, I'd like to be this icon to, to women in aviation. Like, well, that, I certainly didn't do it for the awards. I just did it because I love flying. I really wanted to do it. And I, I just love getting in the aircraft and just taking off and going someplace. Wow. See, when you follow your passion, right? You follow your passion and, and that leads you to, an incredible life, really. Mm -hmm. Well, I was very, uh, very fortunate to do, to have, the, it was, well, I considered it the perfect job. Wow. But, you know, it takes a lot of work. Um, yes. Not easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my son is uh, becoming a flight instructor right now. And, and just, just oh, even yeah. to get him where he is now, I'm like, Wow, he's put in a lot of a lot of work just even and he's at the very beginning so mm -hmm. yeah yeah so it's a, a tremendous amount of self-study and dis self-discipline to um, you'll learn what you have to learn and it's continual right like throughout the oh. whole career changing aircraft working with different people is that hard is it hard when you get on the airplane every time you're there you're you're with someone different and often people you don't know? I never had a real problem. I think probably the guys that talked about being behind my back and said, oh, she's okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um, okay, I have a question here for you from Caleb. Mm -hmm. Have you ever met Beverly Bass and have you oh. ever shared stories of early days? Yes, I know Beverly Bass. Um, there's an organization called the International Society of Women Airline Pilots 
and it was started in night well when was it started but 1978 79 and um i have been going um to them quite frequently and uh, they have a, con a conference every year and it's uh, I've met some of the really neat ladies like Beverly Bass. Aww. And so is that where you you know Judy Cameron of course and is oh. that where you've met Judy too? I was curious how you and Judy met. Um, well I had been flying for well from 1973 and, and then she was hired in 1978 and I saw the the uh, the news article about uh, Judy being hired, and I was just so excited, and I was so happy. Oh, finally, another lady that I could commiserate with. Um, so I I made a I think I met her the following year after she was hired, and uh, we compared notes, and it was really great. Yeah, Aww. she's a great. And what do you think of like the new pioneers? Like, and, and are you surprised that they're still new? Like Melissa Haney, who was the, the first female Inuk to captain an aircraft. I, I'm pretty sure you know Melissa Haney as well. Oh, yes. And so, yeah. I'm so proud of her. She, I mean, she's just an amazing young lady. It's, just, um, it's wonderful. I'm, I just love to watch and see all these other young woman, women uh, pursuing a career in aviation because. Um, there's so many rewards and when you're watching this happen when you're watching these women come in i mean from your point of view you're what you were the first now you're watching these other women come in and learning to love aviation like uh, is there any how do you feel like are there any frustrations that it's going too slow are you are you proud of how quick it's going like which how do you look at it um i'm just very pleased that we women have made the progress that they have through the years and uh, really when I look back and say 19 in the early 70s was when women's lib came was in the forefront you know and I completely agree with them because um, there is should be no restrictions on what women can do as long as they are dedicated and really work hard to achieve what they do so i i don't see that there should be any restrictions on women they they should be able to uh do whatever so speaking of that i i i didn't get to ask you this before we went live um do you have would you like to share the story of of why someone didn't want to hire you at one point because you were women and, and certain things <laughs> well it's just because i uh, i think i sent applications to back in early okay it was not um let me see going back to 1972 i when i was at the winnipeg flying club i um decided that i had to have all the qualifications so I did my multi-engine rating, my instrument rating, and I, and I studied and had written the exams for the air transport rating. And once I had my air transport rating, I decided I was going to apply to all the airlines in Canada, and that would be Air Canada, CP Air, and uh, Transair, the one that did hire me, um, I would send applications to them and send them my resume well of course the um, app uh, the return letters were uh, you know thank you for your application but at this time we're not hiring pilots in the meantime they had hired one of my students <laughs> wow. so i knew they were hiring um but i know it was because i was you know they really didn't want to consider hiring a woman. They didn't say that though, because that would have been discriminatory, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah. It, it's okay. I yeah. I was very fortunate that Transair, the chief pilot was quite uh, 
impressed and he gave me the opportunity wow. to uh, to show my stuff <laughs> Um, there's a comment here from Alex Knox. Uh, one Ooh. of the greatest pleasures I've had in an airplane was getting to share the cockpit with you and Bill on our Flying Farmers Air Adventure to Northwest Territories. Thanks for the honor. Oh, Alex was just a, he has a beach baron and it's a beautiful airplane. And he invited Bill and I to go on this tour. It was, we had arranged it, um, the Alberta, or the International Flying Farmer Convention was in Saskatoon that year. And from Saskatoon, we flew to Fort McMurray. And from Fort McMurray, well, there were six aircraft. So we went from Fort McMurray to Yellowknife and uh, spent two days in Yellowknife and toured around there. And then uh, went to high level for fuel and came back to uh, Wetaskiwin where we uh, toured the museum. And then everybody went home. So it was a great tour of uh, Northwest Territories and we had a great time. Oh, wow. You know, Rosella, I read that you had an issue. I think it was in the Calgary airport where the air traffic controller thought you were maybe a flight attendant. Oh. Can you tell us about that? That's how I was reading well, it. I'm like, what? Uh, it was with Transair on the, I was um, a first officer on the F-28 and of course, um, as pilots, the captain flies one leg, the first officer flies the next leg. So we, we share the flying. But the captain had flown to Calgary and Transair did not have a regular run to Calgary because we just were out of Winnipeg. I forget, it was some charter or something. Um, and so we landed in Calgary and I was on the radio, of course, on ground, you're on the radio, and <laughs> I was uh, you know, making the regular calls, and this air traffic controller came across and said, are you a flight attendant? Or when, no, what he said was, when did Transair let flight attendants use the radio? <laughs> and I laughed, I said, uh, no, I'm a pilot. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. I love your attitude towards it. Like you could have been different, right? Like you, you could have been angry at that and, and, and bitter. And, but I, I just, I think one well, of the things that makes you so great. <laughs> oh, well, sense of humor always goes a long way. Yeah, for sure. Um, we have a question here from Colette who asks, uh, how many different airplane types have you flown? Well, I could have flown a lot more, but just because I wanted to stay in the Edmonton, based in Edmonton, um, I flew the F-28 and the Boeing 737. Uh, 737, 200 and a 300. I did not uh, go on the the overseas, and I did not um, go on the bigger aircraft just because I wanted to stay in Edmonton. And um, another question, in your opinion, what was your favorite bird to fly? Oh, the Boeing 737 is just fabulous. I really, really quite enjoyed that aircraft. It was, uh, I mean, we were flying out of Tak uh, <laughs> Uh, out of, uh, well, it's a gravel runways up north, and Edmonton was the northern base, so we did our, our flying out of uh, Edmonton north and also all across Canada. So uh, flying uh, into places like um, Ikati to the diamond mines, that was really quite oh. exciting. Did you get a diamond? Did anyone give you a diamond out of there? Oh, I no. thought they could. <laughs> we did right. take a tour one day of the diamond mine and um, the where they sorted the, or how they uh, put the rocks through these filters and, and came up with the diamonds. And, and then they had a, a display of diamonds. But they were even wholesale, they were a little expensive for me. 
<laughs> wow. Did you have to go through the, I hear there's like massive security things, oh, yeah. like even you go in and out. And... Mm -hmm. Well, wow. they don't want anybody taking one of those diamonds, putting in their pocket. Yeah. Yeah. There's this little. Yeah. Um, okay. Here, here comes another question uh, from Tre Trevor. Hello, Trevor. Uh, congrats on your achievements. Do you think that senior women pilots are being given a fair opportunity in assuming senior management roles with some airlines? Hmm. Well, I think that uh, if a person really wanted to to go into management, they would go that route. Um, I was never very interested in management. Uh, I would rather just fly the airplane. So I really don't know that um, they're being discriminated against or they just don't want the job. I imagine, I've, I've met a few of uh, Air Canada's senior management positions that are filled by women. So I don't really, really think that they're being held back. Um, are, so here's another question. Are there a lot of women in general aviation today? I think there's more today than there were years ago, uh, mainly because women have better paying positions and they can uh, afford the flying lessons to uh, you know, pursue uh, learning to fly. So th th there's quite a few private pilots and, and I'm not, th there's a lot of women out there that really don't want to pursue it commercially or become a professional pilot. They just rather have fun and go fly. Expensive hobby. <laughs> oh, yes, it is. <laughs> Yeah. Um, hey, I was talking to a group of women down in Gander, Newfoundland, uh, on the webinar here a few weeks ago. And in Newfoundland, you can get your pilot license if paid for. You have to meet certain criteria, like you have to be a native of Newfoundland um, and you have to be eligible for EI. But if you get accepted, it pays for everything from your private all the way commercial, multi, it pays for it all. And so these, this group of women that I were talking to, yeah, they're, they're all getting it, it paid for, which is, I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, yes. Alberta, Alberta, hello. <laughs> well, I'm so pleased. I belong to uh, the 99s, the International Society of Women Airline Pilots and uh, the Women in Aviation International, and they all provide scholarships, which are just absolutely wonderful to help these young women pursue their careers. And I heard that some of them go unclaimed because people aren't, like people just don't know. So, you know, if anyone's That's watching this, like, like, please go and look for them, right? Like, yes, scholarships out there. Yeah, there are even one in my name, to believe it or not, the Winnipeg Flying Club, or the, I'm sorry, the Wi Winnipeg chapter of the 99s has a scholarship in my name, because that's where I instructed at one time. And uh, every year they give out a couple thousand dollars to uh, young ladies that are interested in flying. Not many people can say that. There's a scholarship in my name. That's pretty amazing. <laughs> wow. Um, okay, so Caleb asked, what advice do you have uh, for people during these difficult times that you have, you know, advice that you've learned during your lifetime and career? Um, I have learned that Every time there is a, a crisis, it will pass, that things do work out in the end. I've been through many mergers and many upsets and many, oh my gosh, I think the world is uh, crashing in on you, but it passes and life goes on. And if one door does, doesn't open, then find another door that does. Mm -hmm. So be willing, to be flexible, and just um, 
I know with this COVID thing that um, a lot of young men, uh, well, well, there's a lot of jobs that have been lost and, but things will change, things will get better. So we just have to be patient. How do you feel right now about, you know, like for us and I know other people, we're still encouraging people to look at the aviation industry because we, we truly believe it, it will be back. And then what's that shortage going to look like when it comes back? How do you feel about that, about, you know, continuing in the continuing people to look at this industry? Well, I know things the last few years were looking really good. Their Air Canada was hiring and, and all the airlines were doing really well. And then COVID hit and things just went oh, absolute disaster. And they had to lay off. And they, so my take on it is, yes, things are bad now, but they will improve and they will get better. So I'm hoping that, well, within five years, surely we'll be back to normal where we were mm -hmm. before this happened. Yeah, and I, I think like with, like even NAV Canada right now, yesterday they announced, um, you know, they let go of the trainees and other employees inside NAV Canada and the controllers that have been taking the, you know, early retirement. And so when the traffic comes back up again, it's like, it takes a long time to hire, to train a air traffic controller. What's that going to look like? And I, I think that with pilots too, like, will the shortage be, I wonder if the shortage will be even greater than it was before. And, and it was, it was, it was pretty bad before. We're desperately trying mm -hmm. to get people to look at aviation as a career. Um, right. Hopefully it comes back to that. I hope it does. I really do because it was just, it is such a neat career. Well, and that leads me to this next question that we have for you. Uh, hi, Rosella. How do you manage your time between your family and your career as a pilot? Uh, were there any sacrifices that you had to make for your family over your career? That's a great question. A yeah, lot of women is, have that. Um, I was very fortunate. I married a fellow that was a pilot and we had similar careers. So he'd be taking off in one direction, I'd be taking off in another. Um, the way I managed our children was I had a li live in nannies uh, through the years, and that worked. As I worked, maybe I'd be gone maybe three days a week, and they would be here to take care of the house and the children and the pets. And, and uh, then when I came home, then I gave them their time off. So it, it did work out. Um, it was expensive. Um, having nannies is expensive, but between my husband and I, we were able to support that. Having nannies was good. Um, what, what did your husband do as a pilot? You flew together once or twice, yeah. didn't you? Oh, a few times, yeah. yes. Um, he was hired after I was. I was hired in 1973. He was hired in 1980 as a, a second officer on the Hercules with Pacific Western Airlines. So, um, and then he got on with, of course, with Canadian Airlines because Pacific Western bought CPR Nord Air, Eastern Provincial Award Air and formed Canadian Airlines. So Canadian Airlines, we both flew for Canadian Airlines and I got my captaincy in 1990 and he was still a first officer because he, he was not senior enough to hold the captaincy at that time. So uh, we did fly together and it was, uh, it was really nice. One time uh, he told me that uh, he was in the crew room and these, uh, all the fellows are kind of jealous of him, I guess. Um, one said to him, well, what's it like flying with your wife? You know, she's a captain and she makes more money than you. And Bill looked at them and said, I'm proud of her. Can you say that about your wife? Oh. And end of discussion. 
Oh, <laughs> that's so nice. Oh, it's so, like, I mean, having a supportive husband, especially as a pilot, would you say that that's really important? Oh, yes, definitely. Mm-hmm. That was, uh, I was very fortunate. I mean, he would take over taking care of the children and, and cook meals and and do whatever had to be done. It was never, um, that's your job or my job. We, we just shared. And Roselle, how many children do you have? I know you have a very tall son. I know him. Uh, yeah. Is he seven feet? How tall is he? <laughs> no, he's only six foot eight. <laughs> only six foot eight. He's so tall. I, I, I feel so short when I, when I look up. Um, but, so how many do you have? Just two. And, and he is an aircraft maintenance engineer with North Caribou. And our daughter is uh, 36. She is uh, an, air, uh, an occupational therapist at uh, Sherwood Park Hospital. And, what? Uh, she didn't get the aviation bug? Well, she informed me when she was 16, Mom, I do not want to be a pilot. You expect me to be a pilot, and I don't want to be a pilot. And I said, fine, whatever, <laughs> you know. Not everybody can be the same. So, uh, you know, she, she is in her chosen career and she's very happy. There's three children, uh, twin boys and a little girl, three-year-old girl. Oh, so, so you, have, you have grandkids that are going to look up to grandma and, and be oh, odd. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're fun. Um, my daughter had them out here to the acreage on Sunday and we just had a great time. Flying kites. Oh, oh well, there's a start. Do you think that they're? Do you think they'll? Uh, you'll push them into trying to love aviation. Well, I would like to. Yeah. But they're only se- the boys are seven. The twin boys, seven years old. So, it's uh, debatable what they will do with their lives. Wow. <laughs> so, Rosella, you were you had many awards. Um, Mm-hmm. I don't know if this is if I should ask you this question, but which one meant the most? Was there one that sort of oh, honestly, I can't describe the the emotion of having being given these awards. They were just absolutely amazing. I, I'm I I really had no idea that people respected me that much that they would take the time to make the effort to give me an award so all of them are really special and they all mean a tremendous amount to me ah wonderful well and the the i think the most recent one you can correct me if i'm wrong was the alberta order of excellence Yes, and that was absolutely a beautiful ceremony and just so um, special. I really, really was quite impressed with the the whole uh, and and to be recognized by in Alberta, especially, was just really quite an honor. And I also won the uh, Strathcona Order of Excellence, so. It was uh, in the same year. It same was really, year. Yeah. Like it, that, that has to be sort of, you know, not maybe not extra special, but as you're saying, so special because you, you wanted to stay here in Alberta for your career and you, and you, you made that happen. And then to be honored for that is, is pre- it's pretty special. Oh, yes. Yeah, I'm pretty fortunate. So uh, Alex just made a little comment here. He said, I like your stamp. How did that feel? Oh, <laughs> I really didn't expect that. That was really special. There's a group of um, 99s, well, the, the Women International Women Pilots Organization, a group in Toronto area, um, Eastern Canada, a chapter. Uh, they have taken a project on uh, where they... Uh, they felt that women in aviation should be recognized. And every year they come up with a new uh, stamp. So I'm, I'm one of many. I'm not, uh, not the only one that has a stamp with my picture on it. Um, but they've honored, like Melissa Henry, 
and um, Haney, Haney. Melissa Haney. Haney. Yeah. Yeah. Melissa Haney. She was on it last year and just a beautiful picture of her uh, on the stamp. And I collected all these stamps and every one of the, I've, the ladies I've met and I, I've known in the past. And it's just really special. Wow. Okay. I have a question that, that I'm struggling with right now. So this is, this is my question. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. So, you know, like with COVID that happened and um, all the COVID talk and of course there's Black Lives Matter. There's, um, the, uh, uh, like the election going on um there's all, like all these things going on and I, as i still talk about women you know trying to continue to get women in aviation um i've run across a couple uh people who are like don't you think it's all equal in aviation now like why are you still trying to promote women into aviation like were you you're all allowed to apply to be pilots you're all allowed to be to apply to be air traffic controllers like isn't enough enough well no i feel that young women throughout school um there's still this expectation oh you're going to um get married when you grow up and have children and you don't need an education but women do need an education and I don't think that um, well I don't think that young women have enough exposure to all the careers that are available and what you're doing is exposing these young women to the possibilities of a career in aviation because all young women are going to have to work when they they reach that maturity and they are going to have to hopefully they pick a career where they can um, they enjoy their career and they make um, do something that they feel good about so I really don't feel that um, what you're the there is any um, harm in, in exposing these young women to the possibilities of a career in any field. They need to be encouraged. They need to be um, know what, what possibilities are out there. Mm -hmm. So I, I think what you're doing is wonderful. Yeah. It's always, it's always been that this fine balance of, um, of, trying to make women aware of these careers so they can you know as i say find economic security for themselves so they can choose whether they want to depend on someone else or not um and then that balance with the people on the other side who are i have who kind of say why are you doing this this isn't fair we're all equal and it's kind of like oh, that conversation is so much bigger than you can have in a in a two-minute debate with somebody i agree yeah yes so but i'm very impressed with what you're doing there kendra just it's it's wonderful i i support you in all that you've done thank you rosella thank you i appreciate that and the team will hear this and they'll they'll just be thrilled about that because as you know we have a an amazing team of people it's it's like a mm -hmm. women who are just passionate about what they're doing and and want to share what they're doing and um i've been fortunate enough to be a part of it so yes so well, I wish that you started more involved but I'm kind of busy right now I know I know um so here's a question for you from Mara mm -hmm. now in retirement what does someone identify as a pilot do hmm. oh my goodness Mara is a niece um well I have a very sick husband, so I am taking care of him right now. That's what I've been doing. You are a good woman, good wife. Yeah. Well, he was very supportive of me. And while I was 
oh, for, we've been together for almost, well, we've been married for 44 years and went together for six years before we got married. So we've been together for a long time. And um, he supported me all that time. So I'm trying to support him in his. So, okay, give us a, give us a marriage tip. You've been, married, you've, been married, you've been married that long. You did it better than I did because I didn't, I didn't, la I'm in a new relate, well, 10 years, 11 years almost. Mm -hmm. But um, so give us, give us a tip. What makes a long, happy oh. marriage? Gee whiz, that's a hard one. <laughs> I, I think I just got lucky. Um, just. I think you have to be, as a, as a woman, you have to choose well. You can't just grab the first guy that comes along. You have to sort of pick and choose. Because I was, I was almost uh, 29 when I got married. So I uh, kissed a lot of frogs. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Before I found the handsome prince. <laughs> Oh, well, I mean, that's great advice because sometimes women and probably men do uh, get into relationships and think that they have to stay. The, ne the next step is marriage and then the next step is kids if they want. And, and they don't think that maybe this relationship is not the one that I should be in and leave because that's har sometimes that's harder than staying. Oh, yes, it is. Yeah, it, you know, when Bill and I, well, we went together for six years. So um, I, he knew me and I knew him before we got married. So it, it, it's something you don't want to rush into. Because it is, if you want to make it last, it's going to have to uh, be good. Wow. Okay, I have a question about AME. So if, if you're watching and you don't know what that is, it's Aircraft Maintenance Engineers. Um, it is uh, an occupation that for females, it's about uh, one to 2%, depending on which stat you look at. But so Rosella, for you as a pilot, you, you must have seen a lot of AMEs. Um, and I, the women I know that are AMEs love being AMEs. Like they're so passionate about it. Your son is an AME. Um, why do you think more women aren't looking at, at that as a career? I don't know. Maybe it's something about not getting, wanting to get their hands dirty or something. But it's a totally feasible type of career. I, I don't see why a person wouldn't want to be an engineer. Um, I wasn't my thing. I, I'm not physically strong enough to maybe uh, work on aircraft, but for those that like it, they sure do. I've met a few women with the arms yeah, yeah. Arm services that are aircraft maintenance engineers and, and they love it. Yeah, they, they really do. That's another career we're really trying to promote because mm -hmm. the women that I know that are in it just love it. So tell me about your last day of flying. Not ever, because oh. I'm, I'm sure you've, fl you've flown, you know, but mm -hmm. with your, your work with commercial airlines, what, what well, was that like? Okay, that was with Zip. Now, Zip? Wow. Zip. <laughs> Do you wow. remember pink and blue and yeah. green and orange airplanes? <laughs> uh, actually, what happened was Air Canada had bought Canadian Airlines in the year 2000. And because Air Canada did, did not operate Boeing 737s, they, um, well, when they took over Canadian Airlines, I think there were about 52 737s. So they, they, they kept about 15 or 20 of them and formed a little airlines called Zip. And Zip was in competition with WestJet at that time. We did we paralleled their routes, and based in Edmonton, that was started in I think 
2001, from 2001 to 2004. So in 2004, they decided that Zip wasn't working. So they, that was when I retired was 2004. And they shut down Zip and parked all the aircraft. But my last day of flying was uh, September 1st, 2004. I had done a flight from, hmm, where did I go? Vancouver to Whitehorse to Vancouver and back to Edmonton. When I landed in Edmonton, I was met by fire trucks with the the arch of water. So, and I was flying the pink seven thirty seven. I called it my Barbie machine. Um, so I taxied in. And <laughs> here's the fire trucks. They were spraying water. So I went through an arch of of water. I had to turn on my wiper, my windshield wipers to. Uh, see where I was going and then I parked in the uh, in the, the walkway or the gangway and all my friends and friends and family and everybody was was waiting for me to get off the aircraft well look, I had a, a plane full of passengers they had to get off too so they, they had everybody had to stand to the side and let the passengers off and then we went from there to uh, the party we oh. had at the international airport, so it was it was really fun. Did you really know fun. that your friends and family were going to be there waiting, or was that a surprise? That was a surprise. Oh, was totally a surprise. Oh, that must have been so emotional. Oh, it was. I just well, I hated to give up my career, but it was time to retire. Wow! Wow! So, um, I'm just reading another question here. Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, so here's here's a, a comment here from Hugh. I fly for Kenborg Air. About 15% of our pilots are female. They tend to know what they are getting into when they hire on, and they are committed, hardworking, and highly skilled. They are every bit of the, they are every bit the equal of their male colleagues, and I'd like to see that percentage much higher. Fortunately, management seems to have no gender bias in their hiring practices. I have a son and two daughters, and I sincerely hope that they are old enough to consider aviation as a career. The opportunities will be equal for all three of them. Rosella, you are an inspiration. Thank you so much for being a role model and for all your hard work breaking down barriers for female pilots. Well... And I say good luck to your children. I think that is just absolutely wonderful to have a father like that, that is so proud of their children and encourage them. It's important, right? Like, like I think sometimes <laughs> men don't understand the importance that they have in this, in this world right now to like to inspire and to encourage and to help break down barriers. For oh women. yeah. I think it's, I had a very supportive father and I was so, um, so lucky. Yeah, mm -hmm. to it makes have such that. a difference. It Here's does. another comment for you, Rosella. Rosella is still the inspiration even in retirement. And I totally agree with this. She gladly speaks to groups when asked. She spoke to a group of ladies several years ago and a young girl was in attendance. A few years later, I was with Rosella and Yellowknife and we toured Ice pilots, Buffalo Airways. We met in the tw we met the, this twenties woman who was that young girl and said she was the first woman checked out at Buffalo Air C fifty four. Rosella was standing there when this young woman got so excited to meet her idol, Rosella. What a moment! And I got a picture that's from Alex Knox. <laughs> oh yes, we just had a wonderful time. Oh, what's her name now? Oh, gee, I can picture her. She is just a a wonderful gal and she is so excited to be flying for Buffalo Airways. It, she's just um, an inspiration in herself. Oh, I'm going to have to track her down. Oh, I'll have I to track her down. I bought her um, information on Facebook. I'll, I'll send it to you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I should, I should have a chat with her and, and mm -hmm. uh, maybe get her on here too and see what she's doing. Oh, yeah. so. She's, she's flying those old dc threes and and uh and the c forty six 
well, the, the big one. Um, and that's, that's, loves it. She that's a lot of work up there too. Like, I think oh, that I, I, I hear that the, as pilots, you also are like the baggage person and the receptionist and, and they do a lot of work yeah. up there. She, she is just very enthusiastic about it. Yes. Wow. Well, okay, Roselle, that is taking us to the end of our time. I, I just can't thank you enough for, for being here and talking to us and, and letting us get to know you a little bit more. And just, I just, I'm so happy because I want everyone to, to meet you and see the light that, that you really are in, in this world. Well, thank you so much, Kendra. It's just been a wonderful a pleasure speaking with you. And I just hope that uh, our audience has, has gained a few little tidbits from wow. uh, If Well Lived. Well, and I think the number one, the number one takeaway from this for me, I have to just say is your attitude, like your attitude towards, towards everything. You really could have lived this differently being the first woman to break down so many barriers. You could have had a different attitude and the attitude that you've done it with is absolutely inspiring. And I think something that we all need to, all of us as humans need to look at and, and learn a lesson from. Well, it's been a good life. Oh, really in looking forward to more nice little flights in my airplane and just enjoying the nice weather and winter's coming though oh that's a horrible spot <laughs> i know winter's coming and we can't go south this year well i can't anyway no. the, or unless it changes but we'll see we'll see <laughs> Um, okay, thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you in person at some point in yes. the hopefully near future. And well, um, um, the next party that um, Elevate has, I'll be there. Okay, okay, I'll hold you to that. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Thank you, Rosella. And um, thank you all for watching. Uh, again, we love having you here. I hope you enjoyed listening to Rosella, uh, who is uh, the queen of aviation to, to me and to so many other people. So um, I hope you all enjoyed it. And uh, we'll see you next time when we, uh, well, when we figure out the podcast and what we're going to do with that. And um, I figure what we're going to do with the webinars is a bit of a change for us, as I said, but we're actually excited about it and looking forward to it. So well, um, let me know. Okay. Thanks, Rosella. Okay. Thank bye, you. everyone. Thanks so much. Bye. bye.